Praise the Lord. What a blessing it is to have this opportunity to share um, with each of you. Uh, it's a very different platform for Rivers of Life. We normally um, would do Bible study in person. Um, however, there are some things that are going on um, out of our control. Um, to be specific, uh, my, fa uh, my father's dad, uh, my grandfather went on to be with the Lord today. And so um, we have decided to do um, a Bible study virtually. Uh, and so I give God praise for each of you who have uh, joined and who have um, decided to be a part um, of what the Lord is doing um, in the Rivers of Life Church on this Tuesday night. Uh, so I'm going to pray. Uh, I'm going to lead us in a short song and then we're going to jump right into the word of the Lord. Um, tonight's topic uh, is in parallel with Sunday's message. Uh, Sunday's message was entitled Humble uh, and Obedient and God really blessed us in that uh, message. And so we're going to come back uh, with a Bible study that is entitled Serving the Lord. Um, that's what this Christian journey is about, serving the Lord through humility and obedience. And so I want to talk about that tonight out of the gospel according to John. That is what we're studying. We're studying the book of John in Bible study. We're studying um, the book of Galatians in Monday Manna. And I don't want you guys to uh, confuse the two. Uh, Monday Manna is Galatians and Bible study. We're still in the book of John. Uh, and so let's pray. Eternal God, we are certainly grateful and thankful for yet another opportunity, God, that you've allowed us uh, to join together through a virtual platform uh, that we might study your word. Uh, your word is true. Your word is forever settled in heaven. Uh, your word is right from the beginning to the end. Um, your word, God, is, is the substance we need. It is the strength we need um, to get through rough times, to get through difficult times, to get through um, trying times. It is your word that helps us to get through those circumstances and situations. And so, Father, we ask today, God, that you would help us. Help us, oh God, to embrace your word. Help us, oh God, to apply your word. Help us, God, to live out your word. Uh, your word is a lamp unto our feet. Your word is a light unto our pathway. So God, help us, God, to 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 use your word uh, for strength. Use your word for guidance. Use your word, God, for comfort. Uh, help us, oh God, to find a hiding place in your word. That that's what the older saints used to say. In the word of God, I found a hiding place. And so, Father, help us, oh God, to 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 use your word as 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 a navigation. Use your word, God, as solace and peace. Use your word, God, to correct our lives and to line our lives up um, with the word, with, with you. That, that's what keeps us in alignment. Your word keeps us in alignment with who you are. And so, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, O oh God, for the taught word tonight. Help us, O oh God, to become servants of the Lord. Uh, and we will forever give your name, praise, glory, and honor. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And we always give thanks. And everyone just said amen. If you will, clap your hands right where you are at home. Amen. And give God praise um, for this time of, of study, this time of word. Um, I'm excited about the word that the Lord would have me to share with you tonight. And I pray that this word will be a blessing to you as much as it has been a blessing to me just in um, studying uh, this word. Um, simple song says, Lord, prepare me. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, Ooh, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Lord, for you, and Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, make me tried and true, and with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Come on, sing it with me. Lord, prepare me 
to be a sanctuary. Make me pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, just Lord for you. And with thanksgiving, hallelujah, I'll be a living, oh yes, a sanctuary, Lord, for you. Oh, and with thanksgiving, hallelujah, thanksgiving, I'll be a living. Sanctuary, Lord, for you. Oh, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's my testimony. That's my prayer today. And with thanksgiving, hallelujah, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, just for you. Amen. If you're watching us today, I challenge you today, put that in the feed. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. That's what I want to be. I want to be, amen, somebody, a place where you can dwell. Amen. Lord, prepare me, amen, to be a sanctuary, just not any sanctuary, because uh, a sanctuary to most people is 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 just a meeting place. But no, I want to be a sanctuary, a place where God can dwell, a place where God can get the glory, a place where God uh, uh, can 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 make His habitation. I want to be a man, a a a house. I want to be. Uh, a place where where God can can dwell and where God can sit and have His way in my life. Amen. Amen. Tonight I'm excited. Amen. To have this chance, this opportunity uh, to share with you. We always uh, encourage ourselves out of the Word of God. That's what exhortation means. If I was at the river tonight, we would do our exhortation, and that exhortation comes from Psalms 100. It just says, "Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands." Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. We go back and read, read verse four, 4 and 5 for clarity, with power, and with understanding. It just says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations. People of God, let's be obedient to God's word. Come on, one more time, clap your hands and thank God, amen, for his word. Tonight, I'm excited. Tonight, I'm excited. Why are you excited, pastor? I'm excited because I get to talk about serving the Lord. I have Amen. The unique, amen, and the awesome task of ministering a word about serving God. We live in a day now where, where we serve each other. Um, we serve our church. Uh, we serve uh, uh, different organizations, different auxiliaries, different ministries. Um, but, 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 but in essence, um, sometimes we can get so wrapped up in serving systems and organizations and churches and, 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 and various ministries and, and things that we lose sight of our true purpose. Our true purpose, our true purpose is to serve God. And and and, and I pray, I pray tonight that, that as I minister this lesson um, about Lazarus' sister, as I minister this lesson about his sister, I, I pray that you would would would, would see um, the the real purpose um, of, of of ministry, and that is to serve God. Um, Lazarus' sister, she 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 really took the time to serve God. Um, she she was not concerned um, 
about notoriety. She wasn't concerned about fame. She wasn't concerned about glory. She wasn't even concerned about um, 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 the disciples and how they felt about her, her um, approach to Jesus Christ. Her mission was to just serve God. And I, and I pray today that that, that 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 is your mission as well. Your mission is just to serve God, um, regardless of, of, of how recognized you become or how um, uh, famous or, or how large your support is. I pray that your heart's content today is to just serve God. Um, to serve him, whether it be through a virtual platform, whether it be behind the scenes, whether it be in the forefront, whether it be in a leadership position, or whether you are just um, an average Joe, a layman. I pray um, that 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 your heart's content is to serve God. And I challenge you today, put that in the feed tonight. Um, my mission is to serve God. Yeah, yeah. My mission is to serve God. My my. My, my mandate from God is to serve him. Um, 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 I'm, I'm not here uh, for fame and glory, not here uh, to be liked of men, not here um, to, 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 to be this grand uh, philosopher or, or grand theologian. My mission um, is to serve God. I believe that's what God called me to do. And I pray that that is what you would believe too, that your mission is to serve God and to serve God um, only. Amen. Amen. We, 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 live, uh, we live to please uh, the audience of one, and that audience is Jesus Christ. And so let's, let's, let's jump right into the word tonight. I'm reading from two passages of scripture. Um, I'm reading John chapter 11, um, the end of that. And John chapter 11, the end of that, verses 50, uh, 54 through 57. Amen. John eleven fifty four 54 through 57, it says, Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence into a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think ye that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should shew it that they might take him. Chapter 12. Then Jesus six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, catch this, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one, was one of them that sat at the table. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas, Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my bearing, have she kept this? For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Verse seven, verse seven. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying, have she kept this? The poor ye have with you always, but me ye have not always. God's word for God's people. Let me let me let me preface our conversation tonight. This woman um, who has anointed the feet of Jesus, uh, history suggests that this woman, at some point in her life, um, was demon possessed, um, and Jesus has delivered this woman. She is now free from those demons, um, and now she takes the time to anoint. The feet of Jesus. Um, an, a one writer, one writer says that um, this woman anoints his feet 
with her tears and, 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 and with her hair. Um, another um, says that the disciples became indignant um, at what the woman did. Um, but be that as it may, I, 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 I'm not really, I, I don't really want to um, get wrapped up in who the woman was. I'm not really concerned about um, what the woman did previous to this event. Um, what stands out to me is um, her service um, to the Lord. That's what really stands out to me. Um, at a time where the people should really be celebrating, uh, the people really should be thanking God because Lazarus is alive, right? Uh, Lazarus is alive. Um, he's living. Um, and, 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 and it's Passover time. They should be looking back to Egypt, thanking God for um, him passing over them uh, as they exited out of Egypt. Uh, this is a time where they should be celebrating feast. Um, this is a time where where most of the Jews have gathered together in a central location. So it's almost like a homecoming. Yet this woman is down on her knees, anointing his feet with ointment. This woman, uh, at a time when her focus should be solely on something else, she is serving the Lord. And I want to point out to us tonight that, that, that all of us have things we could be doing. Um, if we went down the list and checked all the things that um, needed to be done in our homes or needed to be done on our jobs or needed to be done, um, you know, just in the everyday scheme of the things we have to do. If, if, if we, we just talked about all of the different things that we had to do and that we needed to get done, we could find a million reasons or a million things that we needed to do other than serving God. But there comes a time in our life when we have to learn to put everything else aside and put serving God first. Why? Because God is requiring us to serve him. Serving God no longer, it, it never has been, it, or, but, but it no longer can be a second thought or an afterthought. Serving God has to become priority. Yeah, yeah, I need somebody to put that in the feed tonight. Serving God must become priority. Uh, uh, it, it must become a, 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 a thing of, 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 of urgency. That's a word we use in education a lot, urgency. Um, but, but, but there is a sense of urgency with, 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 with serving God. Um, serving God can no longer be when I have time or when I can get around to it. Serving God must be a priority. We, we, we must begin waking up every day with the mindset, I'm going to serve him today. And, and, and let me just say this before we go into to, to some reference scriptures. Serving God can no longer be an at church thing. Serving God can no longer be, okay, I'm going to serve him in this auxiliary and in this auxiliary only. I'm going to serve God in this capacity and in this capacity only. We, we, we have gotten to the place where serving God doesn't bleed into the other things of our lives. We serve God in church. We serve God around the saints. We serve God in, in this bubble and it doesn't bleed anywhere else. But, but, but serving God has to be in every area and every facet of our lives. I am a sir, although I'm an assistant principal, I am still a servant of the Lord. And I still serve God in my assistant principal capacity. I'm not saying I go to church and I wear t-shirts that say I'm saved or I'm walking around quoting scriptures, amen. But, but I am a servant of the Lord in my behavior. I'm a servant of the Lord in my speech. 
I'm a servant of the Lord in the way I carry myself, even how I discipline children, even though I may have to suspend some and I may have to put some on charges and I may have to make, you know, uh, uh, decisions about their education. Well, I still have to do that as a servant of the Lord. Can't get out of my character, can't do things that are unbecoming because I am still a servant of of the Lord. And and I think I think we have raised a generation that believe they only have to be servants of God in certain areas or in certain settings. Amen. And so what we find is we have people that are one way on their job and they're a totally different way in in church. We have people that feel that it's okay to 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 do um or to smoke weed or to or to cuss or or to get drunk when they're with their friends, but in church they can be in leadership. Um, but the truth of the matter is being a servant of the Lord, it bleeds. It should bleed into every facet of our lives. And am I saying you won't sin or you won't do wrong? Absolutely not. We have all sinned, come short of the glory of God, and sin does so easily beset us. We we have the opportunity at times to get slipped up and to fall short, but 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 there is a difference in being a servant of the Lord and intentionally trying to do things to please God and 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 being a servant only in lip service, amen, and you're doing everything wrong, amen, but you get in church and, and, and you declare yourself to be right, amen, amen, amen. We are servants every day. Somebody put that in the feed tonight, amen. I'm going to challenge you to write tonight. Use your fingers tonight, amen. We are, amen, servants of the Lord. We, we, we are servants of the Lord every day. Amen. We we are not just servants, amen, when we feel like it or when it's when it's convenient or 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 or, or when it's, you know, uh um when it when it benefits us. We are servants of the Lord every day and we have to get to the place where we believe that and 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 where we where where, where we are committed to that. Amen. Because the 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 truth of the matter the truth of the matter is God's desire is for his people to serve him. Amen. That that that's that that's God's desire for his people just like just like Mary. God wants us to humble ourselves before his feet and offer to him our gifts. Amen. The oil that she anointed his feet with, it was her gift. Amen. She anointed his feet. She offered her her gift to him. Amen. That was her service and 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 and, and that's what God wants us to do as well. He wants us to offer to him our gifts. He wants us to humbly submit to his will, amen, and serve him. He wants us to be of use, amen, amen. I, I gotta say that. He wants us to be of use, amen. I tell people all the time, God doesn't want you, amen, to, to, to wait till you get 60, 70 and can't move to serve him, amen, amen, amen. The Bible says, remember your creator in the days of your youth, amen, why you can still move, and, and the Bible says, present yourself a living sacrifice, amen, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. God, God wants to use you while you still have mobility. He wants to use you while you can still get around, amen. I'm not saying God won't use you once your, your limbs and things begin to fail, amen, but don't wait, amen, to the end of your life to be a servant of the Lord. You need to serve the Lord right now, amen. Why, what, what does the songwriter say? While the blood... It's still running warm in your veins. God wants you to serve him now. Amen. Somebody ought to put that in the feet. Serve him now. Serve God now. Serve God now. Amen. Don't, don't wait. Amen. To serve God. You need to serve God now. Amen. Get in a hurry. Get in a hurry. Serve God now. Amen. 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 Because that is his desire. It's his desire for us to serve him. He wants us to discharge duty and function. Amen. He wants us to perform duties and work. God wants us to serve him. Amen. If we look at, amen, Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, verse number 11. Amen. Jesus says, but he that is the greatest among you shall be your servant. Amen. The, the, we have gotten this thing twisted, y'all. Um, um, the greatest is not the person with, with all the, 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 with all the letters behind his name. That's not the greatest. The greatest is not the person with the largest church. It's not the greatest. The greatest is not the person that tithes the most or that, that gives the most in tithing. That's, that's not the greatest. The greatest is the servant. The greatest is the one that can deny himself. Amen. And, and, and help God advance the kingdom. 
the greatest is somebody that 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 can that in humility and in obedience, right, can follow after the things and the statues of the Lord. That's the greatest. That's the people that 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 God is 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 going to exalt. Those are the people that 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 God is is going to extend favor and grace to. The servants. You don't believe me? Look at verse number twelve. It says, "Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be made a base, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted." God is looking for us, Amen, to 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 be servants. He's looking to us, Amen, to serve others, to prefer others above ourselves, to put their needs, amen, above our own. He, he's looking for us, amen. He's looking for us to be servants. He's looking for servitude. That's what God is looking for. God, God is looking for people who will serve him, who will, catch this, who will deny themselves, take up their cross, that servitude, that servanthood, and follow him. He's not looking for people who want to be in the forefront. He's not looking for people who, who want to be seen and recognized. What does he say? He say he says for those of you, he says he says that do your alms before men. He says do your alms before men so 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 that God so that your Father in heaven can be glorified, right? The the God that sees in secret can reward you openly, right? God is not looking for people to be prideful, to be self consumed, to have selfish ambitions, to to be in it for for what how it benefits me. God is looking for people who who will be humble who will be obedient and who will be servants. God wants servants of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God wants servants of the Lord. And I'm not telling you, amen, that, that being a servant will, will not will not bring you before a great man or will not bring notoriety to your name. That's not what I'm saying. But when we, we get to the place where all we want to do is be seen and all we want to do is be praised and all we want to do is receive pats on the back, we, 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 we are losing our focus. Our focus is to be servants of the Lord, to serve God, to, to serve the Lord with gladness, to, to serve God in our life and our speech and our, in our deportment and how we deal with others. God really wants us to be servants. Amen. And he says to us, if you're looking for the greatest among the people, if you're looking for the person that should shine, shine among the, uh, shine, outshine the rest or to shine, uh, in, 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 a, in a crowd of a lot. If you're looking for those people, amen, you need to find the servant. That's the greatest. The greatest among you is the servant. Amen. 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 And I challenge you today. Amen. If you're watching, put that in the feed. Amen. The greatest is the servant. Amen. The servant is the greatest. The person, amen, that can serve others, throw themselves, amen, into ministry, amen, and do for others, minister to others, help others, aid others, amen, encourage others, amen, restore others, amen, preach to others, amen, lift up others, give them a kind word. Those are the ones that God is looking for. God is looking for true servants, amen. He's not looking for entertainers. God is looking for servants, hallelujah. He's not looking for people, amen, that, that they got their chest stuck out. God is looking for servants, amen. And that's what I've been hearing God say, amen, these past couple of weeks. Just be a servant, just be humble, Amen. Just be meek and lowly. Amen. Don't 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 try to be grand and all that. Just be just be a servant. Just be who God is. God is looking for servants. People that are not trying to 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 to. They're not trying to matriculate up the letter. They're not looking for an, an a, a a spiral trajectory or or, or uh, they're looking. Amen. Just to be used by God. Just to be a servant of the Lord. That's what God is looking for. Amen. Amen. And, and, and Jesus showed us how to serve him. Amen. Amen. He showed us how to serve him in the example of Jesus Christ. If we look at John chapter 13. If we look at John chapter 13. And let's look at verse number three. It says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come down from God and went to God, he rises from supper. Catch this. He rises from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, girded himself. Verse five. After that, he poured water into a basin 
and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Here we have the savior of the world, redeemer of all mankind, God in flesh. He gets up from dinner. He grabs a towel, puts it around his waist, goes down, puts water into a basin and starts washing feet. Savior of the world, healed the woman with the issue of blood, raised Lazarus from the dead, took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000, not to the number the women and children, but he's on his knees washing his disciples' feet. People that served him, people that are following him, now Jesus is on his knees washing feet. Never mind I turn water into wine, I'm washing feet. Never mind, I healed the man with the withered hand. I'm washing feet. Never mind, amen, I, 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 I healed the man that they brought through the roof. I'm washing feet. Never mind, in a couple of days, they'll rip my flesh to shreds and, 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 and destroy my body. I'm washing feet. Never mind, I got the power to get out of the grave on the third day. I'm washing feet. Never mind, I'll sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, until all my enemies be made my footstool. I'm washing feet. Because you have to understand, Jesus understood that the greatest among you is the servant. And Jesus understood that I cannot require my disciples to do something that I'm not going to do. So I'm going to lead by example and I'm going to be a servant and I'll get down on my knees. I'll get a towel. I'll get a basin. I'll fill it with water and I'll wash feet. The problem with the church today is we as leaders have become too high minded. We as leaders think that some things are beneath us. But one of the things, one of the things, one of the things that, that I really thank God for. Amen. I had a pastor. I had a pastor. Amen. Regina Lucius, I'll tell anybody this. Amen. She taught us, amen, the power of being a servant. She told us that if you couldn't clean the toilet, you didn't deserve to be in the pulpit. If you couldn't sweep the floor, you didn't deserve to be in the pulpit. Amen. If you couldn't do this and you couldn't do that, you didn't deserve, amen, to be preacher because the greatest among you is the servant. And I think that we have gotten away from that. We have gotten to the place now where people think I got a title. I got a position. I'm next in line for the pastor. I'm second assistant to the bishop. I'm this and I'm that. Then I can't do this. Or I, that That's beneath me or somebody else needs to do that. Amen. I'll never forget when I first started pastoring um, Mill Branch, we were, we were having um, a dinner and I was in there and I was helping serve plates. And the people were like, pastor, you got a head table. Go sit down. Your guests are, are there. You need to go do that. And I was just telling them, and I said, whoa, wait. This, this is not how this works. Amen. Amen. I understand I'm the pastor. I understand you guys want to serve me. Amen. But, 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 but every now and then, a pastor needs to take off his collar and take off his jacket. Amen. And serve the people. Amen. Because that is what Christ taught us. Christ taught us this. Here are the disciples laid out. Jesus, amen, is literally sitting there. Amen. He's washing their feet. Let's look at verse number six. Then come if he to Simon Peter and Peter says unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? In other words, he comes to Peter and he says, wait a minute. Don't, don't, don't touch my feet. Peter says, no, uh -uh, don't touch my feet. Uh, I, I need to be washing your feet. No, no, no. You're the Lord. I don't want you to wash my feet. Amen. And verse seven says, Jesus answered and said unto him, what I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Verse eight, Peter saith unto him, thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered Jesus answer him, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. In other words, he said, if you don't let me serve you, then you're really not on my side. You're really not on my team. Amen. And what I'm afraid of is that we're raising a generation that doesn't know the significance of serving. They don't know the significance of servitude. They, 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 they want to be served. They want to be recognized. They want to be appreciated. They want to be celebrated, but they don't want to serve. True ministry, true ministry is not about up here. It's about how low can you get down here? Amen. Remember what the scripture says. He that 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 exalted himself shall be made a base. But but he that that is humble, he that is a base shall be exalted. What, what does Peter say? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, God shall exalt you. Don't exalt yourself. Don't put yourself. I think Jesus tells tells his leaders you, you, when, when you're around people, he said, don't 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 look for the high seat. 
as he said, for that's what the heathens do. They, 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 they look, amen, for the high seat. Amen. They're, they're looking to be appreciated among the grand. He said, you got to be meek and lowly. You got to be just like Jesus, humble and holy. Amen. You, you, you got to be low. Amen. I, I, I want to ask you a question tonight and I want you to put it in the feed. And, and even if you're around somebody, look to the left or your right, whoever you're around and ask them, can you wash feet? Yeah. 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 And, 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 and think on the significance of feet. Feet are dirty. Feet walk. They touch things. Right. But they're down there with the nasty. Sometimes ministry requires us to get with the downtrodden, the overlooked, the disenfranchised. It requires us to do things that are outside of our comfort zone. It requires us to, to, to be, amen, somebody who we would not normally be. Amen. But, but, that, 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 but that's what God is asking us today. Can you wash feet? Because if you can't wash feet, surely you can't deliver a sermon. If you can't wash feet, surely you can't lead praise and worship. If you can't wash feet, surely you, 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 can't, you can't read the scripture or be on the program. Surely you don't deserve an appreciation service if you can't wash feet. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That, 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 that's what God is asking us today. God is asking us, can you wash feet? Can you be a servant? Can you humble yourself long enough to be a servant to the people of God? Because when you're serving the people of God, you are in return serving God. That's how we serve God. We serve God by serving his people. But if you're only uh, 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 getting served or being served, how are you serving God? How are you an asset to the kingdom of God if you're only being served? If you're on, if everybody's bringing you your plate and you're not bringing any plates, how are you a kelp? How are you helping to advance the kingdom of God? God is looking for servants. Just tell somebody that God is looking for servants. God is looking for servants. Uh, and, and it's not something. It's not something new. God has always been looking for servants. If, if you go back to Psalms 2 and 11. Psalm 2 and 11 says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Now, now note here, he's not telling you to serve God and be afraid. That's not what he's saying. He's telling you to serve God Amen. In fear. In other words, serve God with respect. Serve God. S have a respect for God or have a reverence for God so much that you'll serve him. He's not telling you to be afraid of him. He's not telling you to be scared of him. He's saying, respect me. Yield your will to mine. That's what fearing God means. Respecting him, reverencing him, appreciating him not taking his grace and his favor for granted. Amen. Amen. That, that, that's what he's saying. He says, serve the Lord with fear. Stop playing with God. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, pastor, you done, you done touched something now. But, but, but see, he says, serve me with fear. Serve me with respect. Serve me with reverence. Don't, don't, don't say you are a servant of the Lord one day and you live something totally different. Because that's what the Pharisees and Sadducees did. The Bible says they served me with their lips, but their hearts were far from me. You don't want to just be giving God lip service. You want to be a servant, amen, in word and in deed. Amen, in word and in action. In speech, amen, amen, in action, amen. You want to serve God with fear, reverence, respect. So many people today are serving him, amen, amen, in counterfeit ways. They got one foot in, one foot out, doing one thing, saying another. But, but the Bible says, serve me with fear. Serve me with respect. Uh-oh. Amen. Amen. Somebody ought to say that tonight. Serve God with fear. Do, do you respect God enough to serve him the right way? Do you love God enough to serve him the right way? Do, do you appreciate him enough, amen, to serve him the way he's supposed to be served? He says, serve God with fear. That's what God's word says. Psalm 102, we've already quoted it tonight. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Uh, 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 Bishop-elect Aaron McNair II, uh, Dr. Aaron McNair II, we, we, he, he did a leadership conference for the Eagles Nest, the, uh, the organization um, that I'm proudly a part of. Um, he did a uh, 
a lesson. And he said, you know, when it comes to servanthood, a lot of people say, you know, um, I'm sacrificing. I'm sacrificing to serve. Everything is a sacrifice. I'm sacrificing to preach. I'm sacrificing um, to do praise and worship. I'm, sa I'm, just, I'm, I'm just sacrificing, sacrifice. Everything is a sacrifice. Well, if everything you do for God is a sacrifice, then you're not doing what the scripture says. Because when you make a sacrifice, what that simply means is I don't have the means to do it or I don't have the ability to do it, but I'm going to make this sacrifice. I'm going to do it anyway or anyhow, right? Hallelujah, anyhow, right? But if everything we do for God is a sacrifice, then when are we going to serve the Lord with gladness? When are we just going to wake up and say, I'm going to do this because I want to do it. I'm going to do this because God chose me to do it. I'm going to do this because I get to do it. Everything should not be a sacrifice. You, you should be just happy that God has chosen you to do something. I get to preach, right? I'm not sacrificing to preach. I get to preach. He has offered me the opportunity to preach, right? He has opened the door for me to teach and preach his word. So I get to do it. I'm not sacrificing my time, right? I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I'm serving the Lord with gladness. That's what God is requiring of us. Amen. Everything should not be a sacrifice. Amen. Some things we should just be gladly doing. Amen. We get to serve. That's right, Sister Charlotte. We get to serve. We are not sacrificing it. We're, we get to serve God. He chose us to serve him. Amen. Somebody put that in the feed. Not somebody. Everybody put that in the feed. Everybody's watching me right now. Put that in your feed tonight. We get to serve. Amen. We, we, we get to serve God. We, we get to trust God. We, we get to offer our time. We get to offer our gifts. We get to offer our talents. We, 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 God is allowing us that opportunity. We get to serve. If you get to do the, if you're doing devotion, guess what? You get to do devotion. Why? Because God could have chose somebody else to do it. God could have chose somebody else to do noonday. God could have chose somebody else to teach this Bible study. But we get to serve God and we should be appreciative that we get to serve God. We should be grateful that God has allowed us the opportunity. Amen. That he's graced us and favored us enough to serve. We get to serve God. This is not a sacrifice. Amen. I'm not sacrificing anything. If I was not teaching this Bible study right now, I would be one of two places. I would either be at the uh, basketball game in my school. Or I'll be sitting on the couch watching Madam Secretary. But I am grateful for the opportunity. I get to serve. Amen. And I could have found a reason not to serve. Right? I lost my grandfather this morning. I, I, I could have had a reason not to be on live tonight. But I, I'm grateful that I still get to serve. And I get to serve even through my mess ups. Even through my mishaps. Even through my shortcomings. I still get to serve. I get to offer my gifts. I get to offer my time. I get to offer my abilities. Amen. Amen. And God uses me in that. And I pray that the people are blessed. Amen. In what God is offering. Amen. But, but, but stop saying I'm sacrificing. Why are we sacrificing so much when it comes to God? We should be overjoyed and excited that God wants to use us. Amen. When I stand up to preach on Sundays, sometimes I'm tired. I am, but I'm still grateful that God has called me and that he wants to use me. And so I give it my all. I don't shortchange it. I give it my all because I'm grateful that God decided to use me and I get to serve the people of God. Amen. 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 I don't, I don't, and I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that he's called me to be a servant. And that's what I pray. I pray that, that you too, I pray that you too are, are in that mode, that you're excited about being a servant. Amen. Because the truth of the matter is there is a benefit in serving God. Amen. There's a benefit in serving God. Amen. The blessings of the Lord um, are, are, are added to your life when you humbly submit and serve God. That, that he, he can bless you. Turn your life around. I want to know today, are you willing to serve God? Can you wash feet? Will you give of yourself to God? That's what he's requiring. God is requiring of us to be servants. Let's, let's, let's look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 
Matthew chapter 3. Now, Matthew chapter 3, um, the story is told about the baptism of Jesus Christ, right? Um, and, and, and I want you to see what John says. Verse 13, then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee and comest thou to me. Once again, you know, while just now we just talked about how Peter looks at him and says, look, you don't need to be washing my feet. I need to be washing your feet. Jesus says, no, unless you let me wash your feet, you have no part with me. And now here we go. We, we we're dealing with St. John, right? Dealing with John the Baptist. And, 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 and Jesus says to John the Baptist, baptize me. He says, why do you come to me to, ba to be baptized? I, I should be baptizing you. And Jesus answering him says, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. What Jesus is really telling him is, let me show you about servitude. Don't get wrapped up in who I am, my stature and my position. Let me show you the significance of servitude. And our main scripture text tonight, and, and we talked about the, the Lazarus sister, how she anointed him with, with the oil. A lot of people around them are like, we should be celebrating Passover. We, 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 we should be doing all these other things. But here this woman is on her, on her knees, anointing his feet. The disciples around them get indignant. But you can't allow what other people think or the perception other people have of your servitude to get in your head. If, if you are committed to serving God, serve God. Look, don't let people tell you you go to church too much. You're paying tithes to a church and, 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 and you don't know how the church is using the money. Don't let people get in your head about servitude. You keep on serving God and you serve God whether other folk are serving him or not. You serve God whether, whether, whether folk are, 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 are applauding you or not, whether you're getting notoriety or not. God is calling you to servitude. He's calling you to deny yourself. He's calling you, amen, to put, amen, your selfish ambitions aside. God is calling you to serve. Somebody tonight, put that in the feed. He's calling me to serve. Yeah, he's calling you to serve. I know he called you to preach, but in your preaching, there should be servanthood. I know he's calling you to lead praise and worship, but the undertones of praise and worship should be servitude. God is calling us to servanthood. Yeah, yeah. God is calling us to servanthood. He's calling us to serve our brethren. He's calling us to serve our brothers and sisters. He's calling us to serve our ministry. He's calling me to serve. He's calling me to serve. And that's why there's so much friction. That's why there's so much uh, friction in the church. Because God is calling us to serve. He's not calling us to be recognized. He's calling us to serve. He's not calling us to be grand. He's calling us to serve. He's not calling us to get all these titles and positions and sit back with our arms folded and look at everybody else. God is calling us to serve. Serve the people of God. And I don't care if you're just taking up the offering or being a greeter at the door. God is calling us to serve. That's our mission. That's our mandate. That's what God is requiring. He's calling us to serve. And I pray that tonight's lesson has been a blessing to you, that you now see what the purpose is, what it is. I don't care if you got to do it and, 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 and be talked about. He's calling you to serve. I don't care if you got to do it and, and, and nobody recognizes and you don't you get delayed gratification. I don't care. You keep on serving. You keep on serving. Don't let anybody make you stop serving because I tell you, when you stand before God, he's not going to judge you according to your sin. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that they stood before God, a book was open and he judged them according to their works. What have you done for the kingdom? How have you served? How have you advanced the kingdom? That's what God wants to know. Outside of your belief, outside of you being filled with the Holy Ghost, outside of you speaking in tongues, outside of all those other things, he wants to know how have you served. 
In what capacity have you served? How are you an asset to the kingdom of God? How are you, how can God, how is God using you? Can you serve? Ask somebody, can you wash feet? Literally, can you wash feet? Can you serve? Because if that question is no, then you're not fit for the kingdom. This is not the place for you. God is looking for servants. God bless you. I pray that this word has been a blessing to your heart. Um, I pray that each of you that are on live tonight would give. Give something, amen, to the ministry. Serve him in your giving. Give something. You can text your gift of any amount to 910-335-8663. Again, that number is 910-335-8663. Or you can send your gift of any amount to Cash App. Uh, that Cash App is Rivers of Life 2. Uh, capital R, capital O, and the number two, Rivers of Life 2. Amen. I know I don't normally uh, do the Rivers of Life uh, Bible study on my personal Facebook page, um, but tonight we're doing that, but all proceeds are still going back to the church. I'm going to give my gift through Cash App tonight. Amen. Giving my gift through Cash App tonight. Amen. And I pray that you will do the same. Amen. Give something to the Lord. If this message has been a blessing to you, Amen. Be a blessing to the ministry. Amen. God bless you all. Always remember the Lord has made room and you should be fruitful in the land. And if you believe on him, as the scriptures have said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Be a servant today. God is looking. God is looking. He's desired. He's demanded that you, yep, you, especially you, be a servant. God bless you and good day.